Hey everyone, and welcome back to another inspiring episode about a legendary woman in Chinese history. Now today we're going to talk about Wang Zhaojun, and she lived around 50 BC during the Han Dynasty. For centuries, the Great Wall of China marked the border between civilized Imperial Chinese Empire and their barbarian neighbors to the north, also known as the Xiongnu. The Xiongnu were tribal peoples living in the northern steppes of what is now modern-day Mongolia, parts of Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and northern parts of China. Around the same time that the Han Dynasty of China was established in the early 200s BC, these tribes actually unified. They came together and formed a confederation under a single leader, therefore catapulting it into a formidable position of power against the Han Dynasty. Now, for years, the Xiongnu would raid the border and disrupt northern trade routes, despite Han attempts to placate them by marrying Han princesses to Xiongnu leaders and giving gifts of silk, liquor, rice, and other goodies. Over time, due to a combination of incredibly costly wars waged by Han to overpower the Xiongnu, as well as an internal power struggle between the Xiongnu clans, the balance of power between the Xiongnu and the Han were eventually reversed. Uh, the Xiongnu eventually was downgraded from a kingdom of equal prominence to a tributary state that was expected to pay homage to the Han Emperor every single year. And this is where the story of our great beauty of ancient China takes place. So you see, back in the day, if you were a Han Emperor, you had hundreds if not thousands of the most talented, beautiful women, daughters of prominent families or strategic connections, called up from across all of the provinces, across the kingdom, to come and live in your harem. But as emperor, how do you actually decide who to visit and who to spend time with? It turns out the Emperor Yuan of Han and his staff relied on portraits painted by the palace artist Mao Yanshou to select his companions. In order to improve the odds of getting picked, women of the harem would bribe the artist Mao with large sums of money and other favors to paint them in a more flattering way so that the emperor would be more enticed to pick them and thus raise their status and the status of their families. It was like a really, really old school way of photoshopping yourself to make you look more beautiful. Well, Wang Zhaojun was the only one who remained honest throughout her entire time at the harem. Not only was she entrancingly beautiful, she was talented to boot as an adept musician, intelligent scholar, and painter. So she was so confident in her own merits that Wang refused to bribe the palace artist. And so the artist Mao decided to paint her with this like really ugly mole on her face. And so she was actually never selected to spend the night with the emperor and remained a lady in waiting throughout her entire stay at the harem. Around this time, the Xiongnu leader was visiting and paying tribute to the emperor according to their tributary status, and in hopes of establishing peaceful relationships with the now more powerful Han, the Xiongnu leader asked to marry a Han princess and secure himself a position as an official imperial son-in-law. The emperor, actually recognizing the Xiongnu's diminished status, was not really thrilled to marry a daughter of his own off to the barbarians, and so he denied the request and offered instead a lady from his harem. So out came the portraits, and when shown the ugly picture of Wang Zhaojun, the emperor agreed that the Xiongnu leader could take her and her ugly mug out of the palace with good riddance. Now, while most women of the time would have been terrified to leave the comforts of the imperial palace for the wild unknown of the northern steppes to live with a bunch of nomads, Wang was actually ready to step into her new role as a diplomat wife. She packed her things and made ready to leave with the Xiongnu envoy, but on the day of her departure, it was only then that the Han Emperor Yuan realized his mistake. <laughs> Here was an incredibly beautiful woman who was incredibly talented, and she was basically condemned to live on the steps with a bunch of strangers. But at this point, it was too late to go back on his word, and Wang was gone, sent away, and along the way, it is said that she played the pipa, which is a stringed instrument, sort of like a guitar, and she played with such sorrow at leaving her home that a flock of geese was so startled by her appearance and the sadness of her song that they forgot to flap their wings and subsequently fell from the sky. And this is where the Chinese saying, Zhao Jun Luo Yin, Zhao Jun causes geese to fall, comes from, and is often used to describe a beautiful woman even to this day. 
Now, as punishment for deceiving the emperor, the palace artist Ma was executed, but that couldn't bring Wang back either. Wang actually was well received in her new home by the Xiongnu people. She was favored by her husband, bore him several children, and the relations between Han and the Xiongnu were peaceful throughout this time. When the Xiongnu leader died, Wang wrote to the new Han emperor, the son of the original emperor Yuan, and requested to return to her home, thinking that she had served her duty. However, she was denied her request in order to follow the Xiongnu custom of marrying the next tribal leader, her own stepson, and continue her service as a diplomat for Han and Xiongnu relations. Wang ended up living the rest of her life in the outer grasslands until her death in 8 AD. Her burial site is still located in Inner Mongolia and is known as the Green Tomb because it is said that the grass there grows green year round. Even though as an outsider you can admire the fortitude of Wang Zhaojun and her honesty, her sacrifice for her kingdom. And I can't imagine being her at the time, a woman of such intelligence as to make her remarkable even among her own cultured society, uh, sent to live not just among strangers in a strange place, but most importantly with strange customs and habits that were so completely foreign to her own. I've had the opportunity to live in different countries, towns of less than 100 people to cities in the millions, and I've got to tell you that it's really, really hard to adapt and feel like yourself when you're in a place that doesn't seem to have anything familiar to you to offer. But when you don't exactly have a choice and the son of heaven orders you to do something, I guess back then you just did it. And maybe it's not just the sacrifice that makes Wang Zhaojun stand out among the other four great beauties, it is really the grace with which she accepted the difficulties of her fate that sets her apart. So I really enjoyed painting her portrait. I made sure to leave out that ugly mole, um, but I did include the pea pot instrument, which in the painting she holds lovingly as her only companion into the unknown beyond the closed doors. If you like this episode on Wang Zhaojun, please like it so I know that you did and I know that I can make more of these or leave a comment to tell me your favorite part. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any other videos on inspiring women in Chinese history, which I put out for free every month here on this channel. So thanks for watching.